Hi, I'm Phil from Driftworks and this is my 964 Turbo and today we're looking at the brakes. So what's wrong with these brakes, you may well ask. And you know, it's a fair question, because the answer effectively is nothing. They are awesome Brembos. Um, they were previously grooved discs though. And oh, I have a bit of an issue with brake dust. I know, right? Real world problems. <laughs> the issue is that, yeah, I've got massively shiny polished rims and I've got these, currently got these endless pads in, in this and you would not believe the amount of dust that they make. Uh, I can go and look at having more of a road pad in it. I can, I've struggled with finding the shape of this. Um, had a good look for what it is, but the caliper is quite unique, possibly an old uh, race caliper. Um, you, I don't know what you can see, it's got drill pistons and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's a really nice caliper, a really nice setup. But what sparked this is uh, basically they're, they're kind of really annoying, the amount of dust they put on the wheels and if there's even a hint of moisture on these with that pad um, on, the, uh, on the rim itself, it'll start to eat into it. So I spend my whole life cleaning wheels, which is not what I'm about. <laughs> I don't really enjoy that, uh, that very much. So yeah, what kind of sparked today's episode is that a man potentially has a set of GT3, 996 GT3 PCCB brakes, uh, carbon ceramic brakes. And I am wondering whether I will be able to fit my wheels, fronts and backs over the PCCB brakes. So I've got my buddy Al, Al famed for Outsiders director, famed for many bigger things than that, but you know, like filming whatever, 300 and something kilometer an hour Bugatti runs and stuff like that. But yeah, my buddy Al is coming in with his GT3 and we're gonna see whether my wheels fit over his brakes. Dear you noisy bugger. <laughs> Say hi to Al, everybody. Hey, everyone. You remem may remember him from such films as... Outsiders. <laughs> and some vlogs. Yes. Not for a long time. Yeah, I guess, um, yeah, there's a lot of new subscribers to the channel with sort of the new stuff that we're doing. So this is Al. He makes awesome films. He works in the office upstairs normally when we're not on two meter rule lockdown. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, we're on a long zoom lens as well. Yeah, and makes, uh, makes fantastic films including one that uh, you released some information on uh, yeah, we did a, YouTube, didn't you? Yeah, we've just, I've just done a, a behind the scenes of how we did our 267 mile an hour car to car film. Absolutely Bugatti. incredible. And um, uh, yeah, I'll put a link in the description to that. Uh, that video has done rather well, hasn't it's it? Right, well? Yeah, although because my channel's brand new, I missed all the monetization. So <laughs> Damn it. Got a quid out of it or something like that. Well, it's really nice to see this again, yeah. and it is looking well and sounding well. What have you done to it? This is uh, a stock engine, but it is now a full um, super sprint exhaust system. So that's the headers, the manifolds, the, the cats, yeah. um, uh, and the back boxes as well. Yeah. But um, as you know very well, Porsches are always on the edge of a track day limit yeah. in terms of sound and yeah. noise. Because when they've got the noise meter here, you've got the exhaust, and the engine, everything all running. Basically just a bag of spanners yeah, rattling around in here. <laughs> yeah, it's like a sewing machine that someone's kicking down the stairs. Yeah. So this is, uh, to replace my old system that's falling apart, because this car spent its whole life on track, basically. Yeah. And 
is amazing. So I've got a tiny bit more power out of it, a bit more mid-range, and I've got roughly the same dBs. Yeah. Roughly. It sounds very fruity though, doesn't yeah. it? I did like I probably put it in the video. I, was, I heard you coming. I was just coming back from Craig's. I had the camera and I was like, ah, oh, that sounds like a GT3. <laughs> that was quite a while away because it hadn't accelerated for quite a long time. And then I put a um, cold air can end kit on it just to get the howl. Like, yeah. The GT3 howl, which yeah intoxicating oh it really is isn't it yeah um it's been a while since um al and i have done it but uh, we've done a few uh, gt3 track days together mm. and i'll see i'll maybe see whether i can put a bit of footage in because this thing absolutely rips with this man at the wheel so yeah <laughs> Hopefully we can get back to normality and oh, actually get back out on track again. Yeah. So what am I here to do? Do you want so, to try some stuff? Basically all I need to do is try my wheels, which are hither, over your brakes. And uh, I'm going to very carefully remove your lovely posh E88s and uh, probably try and not drop it off the jack or anything horrible like that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, just see whether they fit. I think I'm hopeful like the, this is a modern caliper it's quite uh it's quite a big six pop but yeah we'll have to wait and see because the this older style brambo that i have on it currently is extremely deep here so that's my hope that there's a small chance that my wheels might fit over your brakes plus i'm also running a spacer but even without a spacer there's still tons of room to the caliper uh right what space did you run on the uh, 88 I think it's a 10 mil looks like oh cool only one way to find out. Yeah. If you go through the back one, it should be able to lift both up at the same time. That's one of the great things about Porsches. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is how stiff a GT3 chassis is. These are a bit more expensive than my wheels. So <laughs> notice I'm being quite careful. Not that my wheels are cheap by no means. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's, that's, that's a front, that one, so I'm try That's a front? One. This is a front, yeah. That looks like a back? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is because you've got narrow body Porsche. Unfortunately, I can't run really cool wheels. They can like they look quite cool, but they're not nothing like them. Yeah, they, I think they might stick out a little. <laughs> they might well, let's see. We won't be lowering it down, that's for sure. So. No. First of all, we just got to see that carefully whether it's going to clear the caliper. <laughs> that clears. Yes. Hang on. Bring this guy in. Get in your home. Okay. Well, it's a successful fit. Yeah, I will just double <laughs> check. But yeah, it's a bit pokey on yours, mate. Bit, <laughs> bit pokey. Although it's not as pokey as I thought. I thought it was going to stick absolutely miles out. That is miles of room on the back. So that wasn't the one that I was worried about, I've got to be honest. The, yeah. The front's the one that I'm worried about. But that is, it's nice to know. Okay. So the, the back end is a success? Yes. That's good. Successful test. Oh, they are nice and light. 
Forget how light cut tubes are actually, mm. and the wheels obviously, super duper light, but right. I'm so spoiled by all my cars with stud conversions. <laughs> yeah, that's a good shout. I should just do that at some point. The problem is, like, with track days, you just kind of fit and forget, don't you? Yeah, and well, you're not, like, taking them off all the time exactly. either when you're using Cup 2s, because they're so good on the road anyway. That's it. And even though they come with very little thread, uh, very little tread, um, they last quite a long time. Really. They do, and these get uh, quite a lot of skids on them as well. <laughs> yeah. Partial to a skid, aren't they? Absolutely. It's a total myth that... Porsches can't drift. Yeah. They totally do. I remember getting severely told off at, uh, at Rockingham in the blue GT3, the Done some kind of competition there. Drift competition. Oh, <laughs> your reputation oh, precedes you. It's you. Do that with the torque wrench in a moment. But first. So now this is the one that matters. This is the one that. Yeah. Do you want to place a bet? I reckon yes. You reckon yes? I do. See, so yeah, I'm swaying more towards yes, but I don't know. Things never really go that easily. No, <laughs> it was, it's never going to be simple. Are all the hubs the same offset, roughly, or do they? Uh, what the? Are oh, you going to have to fit them to the BBI? Is it BBI hubs you've got? Uh, yeah. So the, the knuckles and uprights are, are completely different, but all that matters is basically the the offset of the bell um, and caliper there. Right. So it won't make barely any difference to. Um, to wheel offset, even if it's slightly thicker, like it'll only be a mil or something different right. on the bell. But yeah, it's just whether it fits over the caliper or not. Okay. We mean to place those ages then because they're um, pretty rusty on the outside, so they look a bit shonky. Yeah. But uh, I don't know, I just. I'm always rubbish at wheel bolts. Whether it's doing them up or whether it's... <laughs> oh, you know. They're not that important. No. Are they? I haven't had a wheel fall off yet. <laughs> I've tried, but... I remember E46 at the number mm. that year. That came pretty close. To I came real close, off. yeah. That was... Uh... Last corner, I'd done a full lap, and I just heard a dunk, 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 and I was like, oh, that's strange. Wasn't Luke in your car being sick at the time as well? Ash Burroughs, Ash possibly. Burrows. Was, yeah, Ash Burroughs. <laughs> Absolutely chundered everywhere. Chundered everywhere. <laughs> twice. I had to stop twice. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Good old Ash. Eh? What a legend. <laughs> now this I don't think will fit against your strut actually. Oh okay. So 
now I think about it. I mean, I'll try, but I, I think it's going to hit the mm. strut. That is possibly touching. Is that touching? Yeah, it's not on. Do you want to put the spacer on and yeah. see if that helps? I'd help, but I can't go near No, no, it's probably, probably best. <laughs> so are these on your car just to, to pump out them? Yeah, so the reason being is they talk about the rather than bringing the face of the wheel there was some reason there's a there's a reason that they don't put big outer dish on that wheel mm -hmm. uh, they talked about wheel sensors scrub radius scrub, I imagine something like that saying, yeah, yeah. yeah. They didn't want very to sensitive to it yeah <laughs> as I know with my gigantic because yeah. that was a discussion we had we said well, why don't you just put some like massive dishes on yeah and that does solve the problem of fitment but didn't solve the problem of this has to steer like a yeah. GT3. That looks a bit more positive. Looks it, like it's got potential. So, that looks pretty magical. Okay, that's good. Um, Hang on, let me put this on the ground and then you can pick it up. Yeah. Oh. It is mighty close on the uh, the part that keeps the pad pads in place there. Can't quite see it there. You can see it there. But it is not touching. I have to actually get my eye in rather than the uh, camera to have a look one second. That is absolutely perfect. Is that a 10 mil space one, that? That is 10 mil, yeah. I can do 10 mil. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> that's the spirit. <laughs> yeah, I can do 10 mil. That's no reason. Yeah. yeah, that's, as I say, it's pretty close on the part that retains the pad, uh, but there's still five, mi five mil of clearance that way um, for that bit as well. So that, that just means hit the button then, doesn't it? I think so. Why now? Why now? Add the cart. <laughs> you know, the small matter of how expensive they are <laughs> but you know at least I've done the right thing rather than just going buy and yeah. then finding out that they don't fit yeah we have tested them on the perfect car yeah and I cannot and if anyone's not picked up a carbon disc next to a steel disc yeah it's mad it's crazy yeah it's absolutely mad when you sort of think like oh that's spinning around and you're trying to stop that spinning it's when well, you know when it's 10% of the weight yeah <laughs> You know, I'm not even sure whether it needs 10 mil at all. It's, the bits that it, it's close to, I'm not even sure whether I needed to put that space on. I might just very gently try it without the space. Yeah, of course. Well. Yeah. Just put that in the right place. Do you know what? Again, I'm surprised how little that sticks out. Yeah. I'm genuinely, because if you think how wide yours is. Yeah, it's mad, but then this is a, the 996 is a small car compared yeah. to the new ones. Like my 991, when we were, we'd parked them in the um, Channel Tunnel mm -hmm. on the way back together, and mine was like that far away from the sides of the, yeah. the curbing. And this is, this was so much narrower. But that, again, is, as a standard body car, is like a fraction of the size of this, mm. which is partly why I look like such a giant when I'm driving it. It's nothing to do with my weight. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, this doesn't actually look that ridiculous, does it? It doesn't. I'm just, like, thinking it's not. I mean, you know, it's, it's a bit Mexican, but... Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to turn it, because I don't want to scratch a caliper, but, yeah, that's everything I need to know. Thank you very much. That's my pleasure. I'm glad it's close. So yeah, just so these are a steel replacement conversion for ceramics. If you do a lot of track work, loads of people, myself included, and I guess you've not done it, had to do it yet, but uh, switch from the ceramic to the steel, um, just for a cost thing, because 
you know, ceramic discs. Uh, although you can now get non-OEM replacements, which are actually a million times better because they're modern tech and all that. But and they do, yeah, they last a lot longer than steel, but there's definitely, in the older um, ceramic brake kits like this mm. and what I have on the Lamborghini, uh, you definitely don't get the same um, feel that you do out of a steel, yeah. steel brake, especially a steel brake with good pads that's up to temperature. The feel that you get and feedback you get through the pedal of this type of setup versus the um, carbon ceramic standard set is it's massively yeah. different in my limited experience um, so yeah this is this is uh, like I say really common and um, unfortunately you do end up going through quite a few yeah we, so yeah. even though you got like so much heat uh, deflection this is all all of the inside of the arch is basically pushing wind at the discs as well for when you're on track um, and even then, I still, I mean, we're still nailing these easily a, yeah. a set every year, every couple of years or something. Yeah. When we're allowed to do When we're allowed to go outside. Yeah. <laughs> It'll happen again. I think it would happen a lot more, but you only have to break like three times properly on Nürburgring as well. Yeah, if you're a hero. Properly. You are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I am not. <laughs> These might not have been uh, greased up for a while. It's though. because I've just put it on the floor face down, which um, is a bit risky, but yeah, just make sure there's nothing in between that because you do not want any vibration. Makes everybody sad vibration. It does. Just going to clean that properly. So yeah, going back to your um, your tyre discovery, I know yeah. we might be recapping an old episode a little bit, but can you kind of like summarise it as to what you discovered? Uh, I'm still, you know... Four weeks on since I did that, since I filmed that, I'm still absolutely blown away by, you know, the results of it. Mm. Uh, I haven't actually, so behind you, that box there, see the work wheels? Yep. That's the new uh, lips and I've gone for, uh, sorry, it's new barrels and I've gone for lips as well, just in case. Um, and that will allow me to narrow up the wheels and here, and the tyres that I bought before I found out that it might potentially be the um, Super Sports that, that were the problem. Mm. So these are P4S's which are the, have superseded the Michelin Super Sport. Right. So because I bought them, yep. I might just put them on the new narrowed wheels and see what it's like. I'm not yep. actually expecting you know them to be as perfect as it was with the track style tyre. Yep. But. I really, it's a road car, so I really would like road tyres on yep. it if possible. Um, but yeah, I'll just have to do some more experimenting and see how it works out. Amazing to see what a difference it made though. Uh, honestly, I don't even think, it, I know it came across like it was night and day, but I don't even think I expressed it enough how different it was, um, how much it went from being a total nightmare that I almost didn't want to drive because it was that bad yep. to a car that was just instantly enjoyable and I was able to push That's on. That's really interesting because Porsches are, you know, sometimes a tricky a tricky thing just inevitably just because of the weight, the fact that you've got like an engine hanging yeah. out the back and again, when, it's not until you go underneath it, like the shots of yours underneath where you see just how far out the back the engine yeah, is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not even like yeah. poking, it is all the way out the back. Yeah. So any and Porsche R and D do like years and years and years of work. Well, they've been doing it for fifty plus years, haven't they? Yeah. Tuning that car to make it actually work. Yeah. And then when somebody like me or Nakai San <laughs> just cuts bits off and just makes it really wide. Yeah. You know, I'm sure those engineers are literally crying. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, um, it's not something I'm going to compromise on the looks of it. Uh, if I needed to, because I think scrub radius does have something to do with it, if I had needed to, I would have considered um, having a higher offset wheel and yeah. pulling the, the whole hub upright assembly out somehow with modified top mounts and yeah. other arms. But I'm glad that I don't need to do that. Yeah. Basically, yeah, I can just get on with driving now. Yeah, as long as it just makes cool, cool whizzy noises. Yeah, that's all I care sweet. about now, yeah. isn't it? chabbing about yeah exactly <laughs> so you got a gt1 coming for that yeah <laughs> that ultimate chabbing about yeah. <laughs> do you think that'll ever go on a track uh i think i have to really i think you have to yeah it's even if it's just like a quick lap here yeah. or there and try not to get too carried away
Well, that's not going to happen either. <laughs> I would definitely try not to get carried away, but yeah, whether it's possible or not. Don't I'm not sure I've ever seen you not get carried away <laughs> when it comes to cars. <laughs> but then I am quite superstitious sometimes with um, the whole last lap thing yeah. that you've probably seen me do multiple times mm -hmm. since we've been friends stopping a track day before you go and do one last lap yeah it's a very important thing I'm to a, do i'm a big believer in <laughs> not doing the last lap yeah yeah don't ever do one last lap <laughs> it's a bad idea yeah it's even drifting like i've seen it happen yeah which is really annoying so like, oh, just one more run yeah you know there's like even, even when you've got like tires left as well that's the that's most the, that's bit. the thing or when it's cost an absolute fortune for the track day some of them are super expensive, like the Nürburgring track days can be really expensive. Yeah. So you want to get your value for money, but yeah. When you feel it in your bones that it's time to stop, stop. Yeah. If your car's the same shape as it was when it started, <laughs> yeah. that's when you stop. Yeah. So now you've got all of these wheels, are you going to have to convert the BMW to Porsche hub and run just your... That would be a good look, wouldn't it? These, these so wheels are sick. Yeah, that would work well. I know that you've got your... Uh... I've got the ACs, but I'm struggling to get the lips still. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. People regret selling cars. You regret selling wheels. <laughs> and cars. And cars, <laughs> yeah. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. I don't, Hooray. Want, I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. Definitely a bit of a result. Yeah. Pretty happy about that. My wallet less so. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know. But as you say, the man maths. Man maths, that's how you do it. Well, we decided there's a next, le next, next level of man maths, and it's film maths. <laughs> because if this and this and this, I want this. Yeah. I should just stop bullshitting myself. I think that's it. Just, just say I'm buying it because I want it. The first stage to addiction is realising you've got one. Yeah. And boy do I have one. Yes. <laughs> so, great success. Thanks Al. My pleasure. <laughs> Thanks very much for bringing that in. That is very useful. Um, yeah, we'll probably end the video there. Uh, yeah, there's going to probably be a part two. Obviously, if I manage to buy these brakes. Uh, there'll be a part two of us fitting them. But yeah, we'll leave it there for now. Thanks very much for watching. Please give us a like if you like the video. Make sure you're subscribed. Uh, my personal Instagram is Phil Morrison DW, and Al's is? At Al Clark. There we go. <laughs> See you next time, guys. See ya.